Jesus. We bless you, Father God. Yes, brother. Oh, Father, we thank you because that song says you are the one that swallows what swallows the elephant. Hallelujah. And Father, whatever represents elephants in our life have been swallowed. Amen. We thank you, faithful God. We thank you, wonderful Father. Yes, brother. Well, Daddy, if we stay here from now to it's not enough to just keep thanking you because you've been so good to us. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you. We thank you. From the bottom of our heart, we appreciate you. Lord, we are so grateful. We did. We slept yesterday. Even if we didn't sleep, we've we'll been sleeping some years before. From now to now, if we have not been sleeping, we'll not be alive today. You gave us sleep. You gave us rest. Father God, we'll come back and we'll sleep just like that. We're talking about sleep this morning. It's not anybody that can sleep. Father, you've been good to us. Yeah. It's not that the enemy is not trying. Yes. You've kept us. You. Father, the few things that, have, that we see are just with infinite, infinite smart compared to what the enemy had planned. Father, we are confident because of you yes, that we will sleep and we wake up because we have this mighty God. Yes, so, Father, today, as a family, we just say thank you. Thank you, most high God. And Father God, I'm just declaring it as an announcement. God says we'll praise him to the end of the year. We'll just keep praising him. I don't know if you're seeing miracles. There are so many things that are already happening. So if you have not experienced any yet, just keep with what God told us to do. So Father, thank you. We are praying today that you give us the grace to enter new realms of worship and praise. Amen. And Father, we'll receive it today. Amen. We thank you. Even as we share your word now, Father God. Almighty God. What can we say? Our life is just about praising you. Yes. But Father, put it into us today. Yes. Minister to us more than ever before. Amen. Your word comes with power. Amen. Let power come with your word today Amen. to minister to us. Amen. Father, we so that we are not just hearers, but we are doers. Amen. Father, more than ever before, let our prayer life be transformed. Amen. Father God, we just thank you. thank you. Glory be to your name forevermore. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Last week we just did them how to minister to the Lord. So today we are doing part two, part of it, ministry to the Lord. And uh, I, I remember we are, uh, today we said we will discuss how would we minister to God. Praise the Lord. Because, uh, and last week we mentioned about some of the benefits. We've heard about so many benefits. We mentioned some of the benefits of praising God. So these are all what we are going to do today. Now, how do we minister to God? Remember we said, I don't know if you were here last week, but we said that when we said God, like, some people that do basic things when we come here, it's all part of service to God. When we do, uh, you prepare for the school, you prepare for anything concerning the church, it's all part of serving God. But this particular time, the emphasis is on serving, ministry to God through praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Ministry to God through praise and worship. So, I just want to mention one of the reasons why we will need to do this continuously for this year is because... Praise facilitates fulfilling of God's promises in your life. What do I say? Praise facilitates. Some of us will have received something from God, either today, maybe years before, and you may not have seen it come to pass. With God telling us this, intentionally, praising God as he's telling us to do, will facilitate it and bring it to pass in your life. Amen. One of the things I know, that you know the Bible says that God crowns the year with his fatness. God crowns the year. So, you are going to experience miracles that you've never ever thought is possible this yeah, last yeah, yeah. of the year. So, don't, you know, we are not of them that count losses. You know, some people, when the year is coming to an end, they begin to count all the things they've lost, uh, the things that didn't happen. No. Our own is to be counting our blessings. That is the attitude God wants us to have. Okay? Don't count what I should have, uh, uh, what I, where I should have been. Some people, it's the time. Hey, my mates are here. My mates are here. By now, I should have done this. No. You are to count what? Your blessings. Because the Bible says that it's only the living that can praise God. Only the living. Praise the Lord. So, I hope it's okay. Yeah, okay. So, now, I praise facilitates. So, whatever God says in his, in his word, because whatever promise God gave you, it's only his hand that can bring it to pass. Nothing can happen. Nothing can help you. It's only the hand of God that can bring you to pass. Sometimes God has given some people promises and they wait and they begin to work it out themselves and they enter trouble. You will not enter trouble believing God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because God wants you to, it's only God's hand that can bring it to pass. Whatever he has said is only his hand. 
Um, for some of us that are believing God for immigration settlement, it's not the lawyer. What God, whatever God has said, only his own hand can bring it to pass. So let's go to 1 Kings 8.15. 1 Kings 8.15. And he said, yes? Please. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, mm -hmm. and he had with his hand fulfilled it, saying, he said it, and with his own hand, he did what? He fulfilled it. Do you see what we are saying? As God says it, it is with his own hand, he will fulfill it. Amen. Psalm 22, Psalm 23, 22 verse 3. 22 verse 3, Psalm 22 verse 3. He says, But thou hast only, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Praise the Lord, because as you're praising, what is happening, God is inhabiting where you are. And where he is inhabiting, his hand will be, praise the Lord, his hand will be apparent. You know one of the things that, um, you know, um, in one of the places in the Bible, it says that if God, it's Jesus that was saying it. He was telling them because they were saying that he's performing miracle through visible, the prince of demons. So Jesus was telling them, if God, through his finger, cast out demons, do you understand me? How say you? So what Jesus was saying is that casting out demons is just with God's finger. Again, in another place, it says, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm is bigger. Finger is nothing. But God, through finger, okay? Through finger. Remember when some certain miracles were happening, what did the magician say? This is the finger of God. God will begin to show you both his finger and his arm. Amen. As you begin to show God. Are you understanding me? Amen. See, with God's thing is simple obedience, brethren. Simple obedience. Do it now. Whatever God tells you to do. And I believe God that God will begin to give us the grace. And um, I was sharing my testimony <coughs> yesterday. Um, um, some people, uh, we had this um, um, uh, the minister and partner with. So the man of God just brought it out and said, the partner letter. He kept saying, what I was hearing is that he said, As I've told some people to bring their bills, their debts, and speak to it. Because so many testimonies are coming. He says some people are still rationalizing it with their brain. How can it be? And they are not obeying. But you know, he kept saying, as Jesus' mother told them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. It's just to occur to me that even me that is reading this, I've not. And I had some, I had some tax bills to pay. I have this, I have this. Because I work with an agency, they don't do these things properly. So every, at the end of the month, they will send me one big fat at the end of the year. So I said, okay, God. Okay, let me try this now. Let me do this now. I sowed seed immediately concerning that. And I said, Father, this seed is concerning my tax bill. Brethren, I have been saving up to just pay instrumentally out of that. So I now said, okay, this weekend, weekend, I will, it will not delay. Let me um, pay that installment. Because normally when you pay, it's automatic. It will tell you how much money you're owing. It, it's not, it doesn't hide. If you log in, to somebody that has personal tax account, as I do. It will just tell you how much you are. And any time you go there again, it will show you. I went there. And I opened my account. He said, you paid this amount. There's, you're not owing any time. I said, how can it be? How can it be? I went again. I went around. I went 2022 to 2023. You are not owing any tax. There is nothing to pay. I said, God, how can this happen? I, because it's still not occurring to me. The Holy Spirit reminded me, remember. Remember the seed you sowed for this. Brethren, our problem is believing God. How God does his things? Whether God did it in the computer and all. All I know is that what I was supposed to pay, they said I should not pay anything. Is that not so? You don't owe anything. And before that time, I've heard testimonies of people. Did you know America students loan is very, very expensive? Sometimes up to 160 something thousand students loan. And they will say that they wrote them and said, from now on, we'll cancel your bill, you're not owing anything. Because of this, what the man of God told people to do. You know, other people will be saying, hey, how can you, uh, on, on, on the enemy can say, after you've been so irresponsible, and then you, God is God. You know the reason why we don't pay for our sins? Somebody paid for it. That's why you don't reap the fruit of, you know some people will say, you have to reap. No, somebody has already paid for it. That's the reason why you are not reaping. You know, I say you reap what you sow. You will not reap what you sow. Do you understand? If it is, I'm talking about even a mistake situation. Why? 
if you trust God. Because somebody paid the price. That's what Jesus did for you and me. So let us be bold with God. Praise the Lord. Let us be bold. If I did it, okay. That prompting, when I said this, I said, okay, how will I solve this problem? God ministered to me, so the seed. Some of us will short cycle the process through that. We start, uh, uh, we start um, saying, I'm looking for money to solve a problem. And you're telling me to. But simple obedience. Whatever he tells you to do, do what? Do it. Do it. I'm praising for the result. My mind has gone off it until I saw that thing. And it was God that was ministering to me. Go there. Check. Check. And I checked. And however it happened, brethren, because he's there, irrefutable evidence that I have paid it all. Praise the Lord. So how God did it, it's not my situation. How God will do your story, how God will perform your miracle, it's not your business. We are not to understand. Do we understand? We are not to understand it. Do you understand how aeroplane fly? The combustion engine, this one. Do you understand? Don't you enter aeroplane? Simple. You don't need to enter to, to understand how the working of aeroplane before you enter aeroplane. Just follow God. Whatever he tells you to do, what do you do? Do it. Praise the Lord. So, yeah. that's, so this God is mighty. Then, um, Psalm 65, 11. As the year is coming to an end, Psalm 65, 11. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, mm -hmm. and thy heart drop fatness. Don't count your losses, but count your blessings. Count your blessings. Praise the Lord. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. So we are to get smarter, getting smarter than the enemy. You know, like God told us to do this. Please, brethren, don't stop. We are going to get smarter than the enemy. Praise the Lord. We are good. What is this? We have to be smarter. He's performing around you. Instead of you paying attention to his performance, you are praising God. That is how to outsmart the enemy. Do we understand? He is doing things to get your attention. Because all the things he brings away is to get your attention, to make you focus, to distract you. Now, instead of paying attention to the evil, what are you doing? You're praising God. That is how to outsmart him. That is how to deal with him. Praise the Lord. The praises of God in your mouth. Praising your father. Thanking him. Because what we are saying, if God has done it before, can you not do it again? So, if God has done it before, he can do it. Why can't I praise him for doing it again in my situation? Praise the Lord. Why can't I trust him that he will change my situation? That he will do what he has never done before? Even if he has never done it before, it starts with somebody. Is that not so? Ah, God will make me a number one now. A number one of the ex example. Praise the Lord. So, so, so we are talking about how do we now, you know, last week we mentioned about that we can praise God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit individually, one by one. Praise the Lord. So now we are going to discuss how we are to praise every one of them. Now, the best way we measure to praise God is through, through our praises. Praise the Lord. So we can worship the Father. Now, when we are worshiping the Father, you know, because sometimes we jumble them, but if we want to spend time, we can worship the Father. Worship the Son and worship the Holy Spirit. When we worship the Father, we thank Him for who He is and what He has done and what He's doing for us. Okay? We can declare His wonderful attributes to Him. For example, He abounds with goodness and truth. He is very merciful and forgiving. Can we go to um, Exodus 34? Exodus 34, from verse 6. And the Lord passed by before Him mm -hmm. and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, mm. and that will by no means clear the guilty, mm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, upon the, <coughs> unto the third and unto the fourth. Okay, number one, it says that God is merciful and gracious, right? But then it says that God, even though he's merciful and gracious, He's not permissible. He's not permissible in his love. You know, you know, in other words, with his love, it's not like, hey, you know, you can do anything and get away with it. But there's a catch for us that are Christians. Jesus, at the cross, God's justice and love met together. Hallelujah. At the cross, his love and justice did what? Met together. So Jesus now paid the price you would have paid. You know when he says that he does not by any means forgive iniquity. But with Jesus... 
that love he has, he says his loving kindness and tender mercies are forever, isn't it? So he's a loving God. So, but to fulfill his justice side, he brought his son to pay for the sin. That's why I was telling us that you will not reap. You will not reap your mistakes if Amen. you are a child of God. Amen. Why? Amen. Why? Because he is, Jesus has paid for it. At the cross, justice and love met together. Praise the Lord. So when you're praising the Father, these are the things you're to remind him of. Abounding in mercy, loving kindness, full of kindness, full of tender mercies. Praise the Lord. So that's what, let's go to Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Lamentations, no, I want you to read Lamentations 3. Let's do from, uh, yeah, okay, yes. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, mm. because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It's his mercy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. If you go to that lamentation, at the beginning it says, even though the vine will not yield his fruit. From verse 21 of that. Even though the vine will not yield his fruit. Even though this will happen. Yes, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. Do you see? I will rejoice. So, even though things are not producing, oh, brethren, our thing is, may God, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me, may God help us not to be sensual anymore. Amen. You know, because once the enemy gets your mind, eh, he controls the situation. He begins to control you, begins to control everything. Guard your mind. Guard your mind with what you are talking about. Whether you feel like it or not, just do what God, see the whole place we did here. Did you see the hot place? Brethren, try this in your, in your room and see if you're. Uh, 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 even if you're crying and do it, just try this. Just one praise. This hot praise. Dance before God. Do it and see if everything will not change around you. Yeah. Because the whole idea is to change the atmosphere. Break that hold of the enemy against your life. Break that depressive feeling. Because once it gets your mind, he begins. Like a puppet. You know how they, uh, that thing, they, they put the leg, the leg will follow. They put this. That's what the enemy does once he gets our mind. But you, why do you break the flow? You want to break the flow with two praise because he cannot stand where God is praised. He can't. He can't stand where God is praised. Praise the Lord. So, again, praising the Father. We're talking about praising the Father. Um, uh, First Peter, uh, Psalm 145, 8 and 9 is still talking about God's loving kindness and tender mercies. God's loving kindness and tender mercies. Praise the Lord. The Lord is gracious. And full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Yes. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Over, is it, did he say over some, some of his works? Over who? All. all you see the love of the Father. You see the love. I remember Jesus is the representation of the Father to us. So as the Father is, so Jesus is. Praise the Lord. So, um, 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 I think it's Exodus 15, 11. It says, God is glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Because when you're praising, he becomes fearful. Praise the Lord. He begins to do things that will make you fear. Praise God. So, now, some, um, we can praise and worship God with songs. We are talking about the Father. Now we'll go to the Son. Praise the Lord. we we'll go, how do we worship the Son? We can thank him for what he did for us at the cross. At the cross. We'll praise him for who he is. And his exalted position in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the glorious risen one, the one to whom all knees shall bow and all tongues confess that he's Lord. We can express our love and adoration for him. We can also worship him in the spirit. One of the things I want to mention to you here, as you're worshiping the Trinity, tell them, like when you finish the, worshiping the Father, tell the Father, I love you so much. Thank you for being my father. Express your love. Do you understand me? Say the word, I love you. I love you so much. For every single one of them, express your love. Don't be a very African concerning this. Do we understand what I mean by being African? Express your love. Father, I love you with all my heart. I appreciate you. I love you for being my father. Do we understand? Praise the Lord. So, now, remember in the Revelation, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The one who was dead and is alive forevermore. You thank him for what he did for you at the cross. If Jesus didn't come, salvation is not possible. You thank him. These are one of the areas. You thank him for bringing you before the Father. Because of Jesus, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Is that not so? So there are so many things to thank him. Then when we come to the Holy Spirit, we thank him for his wonderful functions. Remember the work of the Holy Spirit. 
He fills us, inspires us, empowers us, teaches us, sanctifies us, fills us with abundant hope, abounding hope, imparts to us righteousness, peace, and joy. That's all. Now, we also yield our lives, intentionally yield our lives to the Holy Spirit. Because as you're praising Him, we say, the Holy Spirit, I yield my life to you. Remember that feeling of, the feeling of the Holy Spirit is a continual affair. It's not a one-off thing. The day you began to speak and talk, it's not just, it didn't end there. It's a continual affair. So, it said, be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. So, as you invite Him, thank Him for filling you up afresh. Thank Him for His presence in your life. Thank, begin to thank the Holy Spirit for all the little, see, brethren, the problem sometimes with us is that we become, how do I put it? I want us that our default will be praise and thanksgiving. When, uh, for me, when I leave my house, my street is very tight. I thank God for parking when I come back. As I'm leaving, I thank God for parking. I'm, I'm telling you, God has never filled. He will not allow me to go and park in another street. I'll, either as I'm coming, another one is pulling off. Do you remember? To thank him for such things. Are you understanding me? You are looking for your khaki and you ask the Holy Spirit, show me where it is. The Holy Spirit will show you. Do you thank him? You know, make much of your relationship with the Holy Spirit. All the things he helps you to do. Now, it's not just that. The things that you're supposed to do that you didn't do. Let's say I'm supposed to get angry at something. And it happens. And somehow, I had peace. Somehow, I believe that inner prompting in me. Like, don't, don't lose your cool. Don't lose your cool. Be quiet. And you finish. Who helped to restrain you? Holy Spirit. Do you thank him for it? Do you understand? So, make it a continual. You know, like every time. You cook and your food is say, Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for making this food so delicious. Talk to him. He's there with you all the time. Talk to him. Brethren, I've given us uh, what we are to be confessing about Freedom House. Daily confession. Did I say what? Daily. Not weekly. Not only when we come to church. Daily confession. So put it where you will see it. Praise the Lord. That is the new mandate that God gave us. Daily confession. So, and if you notice, that confession is couched in thanksgiving. Father, we thank you. Father, I thank you. Praise the Lord. So let us, so that is why it's so easy to relate with the three, three of them in Trinity. Go to John 16. In John 16, from 23, 26, you begin to see the work of the Holy Spirit. He will remind you of all things. In John 14, the work of the Holy Spirit is there. We use them and begin to praise God. Praise the Lord. So, now, ministry to the Father. We are going to take an example of how to go. Oh, it's almost time. So, dear Heavenly Father, I'm just giving you an example here. I got this and I minister to me so much. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I come to worship you, to praise you, and to adore you. You are an awesome God who is glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. All those scriptures is what we are using here now to praise him. Oh God, oh God, okay, a God who does wonders. You are wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. That's Isaiah 28, 29. I honor you and I worship you. Thank you for your wonderful attributes. You are bound towards me in goodness and truth. You are merciful and gracious, forgiving and long-suffering. That's Exodus 46. I thank you. You are very, very kind. Joel 2 to 13. You are a God of love who is full of compassion, tender-hearted. You know, we use Psalm 145. Um, a, a woman of God, is Gloria Copeland, she says that the more you begin to thank God for his goodness, the more you experience that goodness in your life. It's as simple as that. The more... You begin to thank God for anything. And brethren, anything you thank God for, the enemy cannot steal it. Anything. That's why we are to be thankful. That's why we are to be It's like an attitude. The enemy cannot steal those things. So, so as we keep thanking God, you know, abounding in mercy. Good. You are a good father. You are good to me. Father God, I thank you. And the enemy is telling you, how is it good to you? Look at you. Look at your shoe. Look at your this. You just... Well, you, you just ignore him and keep praising the Father. Some things will begin to happen in your life. Praise the Lord. So, uh, during that Hallelujah Challenge, during that Hallelujah Challenge, that's one of the things that God did for us. We were, um, you know, we are praising God. There's something that is, there's nothing as powerful as just praise, 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 Papa. Um, we've been believing God for work for my daughter. The last work she did, after a while, it's like everything dried up. So we kept praising. We kept praising. Two supernatural jobs came into. No reference. She didn't apply for them. From nowhere. From nowhere. See, we begin to begin to experience the supernatural aspect of God as we begin to do this thing. If you're not yet, please, uh, what do I call it? Uh, join in. 
I remember at the beginning, we are not thanking God only for our family. Everything you know as need for every family in freedom has to be bringing it before God as thanksgiving. If you know people who are believing God for the fruit of the womb, you thank God for giving them children. Are you understanding? For people who are maybe, you just thank God. Anything you know about anybody that needs help, bring it before God. Just thank God. Thank God for freedom as that's the, for the freedom as that's why you have that paper. Biggie, let's just make it a lifestyle. For the rest of the year, let's obey God and say what he will do for us. Shall we begin to?